Mark Clark is the pastor of the Village Church, a mega church that's grown rapidly in a short time here in Vancouver. Mark, thank you so much for joining. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. Now, generally people, uh, your, your church has grown so fast, people want to know how have you done it? What's happened? But let me start with your story, your journey to faith. Mm -hmm. How did you bump into Jesus? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. My, uh, my father was an ardent atheist. And so uh, to the point where actually my brother's name is Matthew. And my dad said, we have to name him and spell his name with one T so that we're not biblical. Right. Four years later, he named me Mark. Okay, he doesn't have a clue what's going on. Literally, if I had another brother, <laughs> well, he'd probably named him Luke. Things? I have no idea. My dad had never opened a Bible in his life. It was totally against Christianity. Um, and so when I was later, uh, 17, 18 years old, I'd been to summer camp and heard some things about Jesus uh, as a kid uh, when my parents got divorced. And uh, But when I was 17, 18 years old, a guy in high school told me about Jesus. I gave my life to him. Everything got to, I was into the everything a kid who doesn't know Jesus in high school is into. Uh, totally reoriented the whole direction of my life. And uh, first walked into church when I was 19. It was the first time I ever walked in. And I only stayed because there was a good looking girl there. And uh, <laughs> she was singing up front and I went, yes, I like church. This is good stuff. So I married her. She was hot. Still oh, is. You, I yeah, well I married played. her. Well I walked into it. I was dating another girl. It's a long, I had to break up. You see, God was working it. your life God because I went to church cool because, because of a girl and then and they, they, not just her, all of them, they laughed at me. Right. Because really? I had an afro that was out of fashion. Oh, I had anymore. holes in my shoes. Right. Oh, you're right. supposed to say. Right. So, you know, you did much better than I did. I, I, so, I, did, I did great. <laughs> yes. So anyway, so that's why I stayed in church. And then, um, yeah, it was amazing. God got a hold of me and I, I was going to go into the film industry and I ended up going to Bible college and getting a degree and going into ministry and, uh, and became a pastor, moved out to BC. I was originally from Toronto, moved out to Vancouver to get a master's degree and just really wanted to move on. And then God said, why don't you stay here and plant the church? And so we planted Village Church in January 2010. So six and years ago. You planted the church. Yeah. And, and I, am I correct in thinking the church started with about 10 to 12 people? Yeah, yeah. There was about eight couples that started the church in my, we were meeting in our, uh, in my small living room in our little condo. Uh, the church I was working at launched us out. And so uh, the, the eight families uh, helped plan it. And then the church gave us about 30, 35 people. And so our first kind of launch Sunday, we had those people in a gymnasium, small little gymnasium and an elementary school gym. And uh, yeah, it was six years ago. So now you, you, you have over 4,000 people turning up to your, to your mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. You must have some, some moments in that journey that, yeah. that haven't been so pretty. Yeah. Uh, are there any that you're comfortable sharing with us? Oh, uh, oh, so many failures <clears throat> on my part. Um, there's been some failure. I mean, I could, I, I've made massive mistakes. I, I, I've told people uh, things that were wrong about their family. You know, I, there, there was one guy who was uh, sick in the hospital and I went in and visited him and, and actually uh, the nurse had told me he would pass away. And so I went and told his wife that he passed away and for 45 minutes shepherded her in a room and he wasn't dead. I had the wrong guy. You can't even talk. That's how many mistakes I've made in ministry. Wow. And so uh, it has not been perfect, uh, but man, the things God has done, even I mean, this is all first Corinthians, right? The morons of the world, the foolish people of the world, that's who God uses to do amazing things. So. But let me ask you on, your, on a pers yeah. personal yeah. note, yeah. You, you have a syndrome called Tourette's syndrome. Tourette's syndrome, yeah. 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 Now, for yeah. those who don't know what that yeah. is, tell us what it is and how it manifests. Um, well, uh, it, uh, it has all kinds of different levels, uh, just people who have it on different spectrums. So I got it when I was a kid and my parents got divorced. I think the, the just the psychological trauma that I went through just click something in my brain. And I started doing little habits. So you see me do little ticks with my face or my eyes or whatever, right? <clears throat> so that's what I started to do. And it developed through my teen years into obsessive compulsive disorder where I would like swear under my breath or have to do weird things with my hands or my knees. Or, you know, you're walking through an airport and you hit a post and then you think, you know, oh, if I don't go and hit that post again, my plane's gonna crash. And then take that little idea that maybe you've had, maybe you don't, I don't know, you're looking at me like, that sounds crazy. <laughs> well, amplify that out, you know, times a hundred. And that was my life growing up. So you don't tend to be the coolest kid in town. 
uh, when that's your life. And yet, um, I think uh, through a series of years, God has slowly um, healed me of a lot of what it used to, how it used to manifest. And uh, now he's given me some residue. I think almost like Paul's thorn in the flesh where I go, God, I want to get up and preach the Bible to people. All right, these people, they don't need this distraction in their life of me twitching my face around. And God has said, no, I'm going to keep that with you uh, because that's the thorn in your side and I want to keep you, you know, down. How does a young man who grows up in an atheist family uh, 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 who, who has uh, syndrome will, will all happily uh, give to somebody else, right, not right. us, <laughs> who, who feels like, man, I, you know, I wanted to be a filmmaker or right. in films. And, yeah. and what one word would you say captures uh, where you are and what God has done with and through you? I'm just baffled, uh, baffled. maybe. Um, uh, we started out, the only expectation, see in the church planting world, uh, very few churches ever work. 80% of churches generally fail when you start a new church. And then the, the average church size in Canada is probably between 70 and 80 people. In America, it's probably about 120. You hear about the big ones, but the yes. average church size. Very true. Um, and so uh, the only statistic I, I ever shot for was when we started, I had read a book that said you have to reach 200 people within 18 to 24 months. So within two years, you have to reach 200 people or the chances that you ever will go drastically down with every year and that you might never. So we had just said with by January 2012, we want to people. That was the only numerical we ever put on our ministry. And uh, other than that, we wanted to preach Jesus, uh, raise up, uh, you know, preach the Bible to people who don't know the Bible. I grew up as a skeptic. So every week I just preach the Bible, literally verse by verse by verse through entire books. We've been in Matthew now for two years. I think I'm in chapter 10. You know, I'd, I'll do a half a verse a week because, but I'm preaching it to skeptics, to people who don't know anything about Christianity. Um, and I try to constantly show them that the Bible is extremely transformative for their life, even though they don't care about it. They don't care about it. They wake up in the morning, they're not asking, oh, what, what, I need Jesus, what's going on? They're going, hey, what's gonna work in life? And, uh, and so we try to show the Bible uh, to people every day and every week and show them, and this works to transform your life. Jesus is the only answer for that and try to do it through a skeptical grid. And Mark, thank you so much for telling us your story. Well, thanks for having me.